Check it out smartly. Now set the flying jib. Helmsman, steady as she goes. Muster the new hands by the main hatch. Mr. O'Donnell. Wake up. I only see four. Where's the fifth? Get your socks hearted, Johnson. Shut your trap, Cookie. Please stop. Stop, please. Put these on and make it snappy. You want it on deck. We're aboard a ship? The good ship Ghost out of Frisco, heading southwest. Where are we bound? To Japan. Seal hunt. <laughs> I want to be put ashore. What did you say? Don't be bashful, lads. Uh -oh. Step right up and put your John Hancock in the log. You, sign. Not me. You think you can fool me? Think I can't tell a sailor from a landlubber? You got sea sailor. But I'm not signing on. And no one can make me sign on Wolf Larson's ship. First mate is dead, sir. Johnson. All right, Captain. You know what to do. That I do, Captain. Cookie, fill a sack with coal to ballast him. You're next. Which way do you want it? I'm... I'm signing on right now, if it pleases the bosun, sir. Smart lad. As a volunteer, you'll draw half pay. Hey, you! What are you doing there? None of this concerns me. So you can hardly expect me to sign on. Ha! <laughs> He's mad as a hatter! What was your occupation? Occupation? I'm a gentleman. A what? Gentleman. Do you know the meaning of the word? Being a gentleman is not an occupation. How did you live? I have a certain income from my father's estate, but I don't see. Well, I thought so. Thanks to your father, you eat, and thanks to your father, you live. You walk with a dead man's legs. Captain Larson, I insist upon my right to be put ashore as soon as this ship can make port. Can you impose your rights on me? No, 
then they are not rights. Erickson! Aye, Captain. As of now, you are Mr. Erickson, first mate. Leech, you're no longer the galley slave. Boat puller Leech. Uh, thank you, Captain. All dressed up like a Christmas goose. Hold your tongue, you fool. There's your new scullery boy. Get to work, me fine gentleman. Come on. The Bible. All hands, attention. The only phrase from the service of the dead that matters, I now pronounce. And the mortal remains shall be consigned to the deep. Deep six. All hands of the duty watch, lay to. From now on, you'll get your orders from the new bosun. Oofty, oofty. Into the rigging. You're going aloft. Get up there, I said, right now. That man's in no condition to go aloft, Erickson. Mr. Erickson. And mind you, don't forget it. I won't, Mr. Erickson. I'm volunteering to do his work, that's all. By God, are you trying to tell the first mate how to run this ship? He'll work if it kills him. Permission to speak to the captain? Captain, can I take that man's place? You already stood your watch. That's cruel and inhuman punishment. Have you said your piece? Not by a damn sight. Ain't the captain interested in our grievances? Bully beef that's more worms than meat? Half a cup of water a day? Four months at sea and then not permitted to go ashore in Frisco? Yes, by God, kept prisoner aboard this pest ship three miles off. Cause you know they'd find out the pox it took six of the crew and they'd quarantine the ship for a month. And we'd never arrive first on the sea. Shut your ground. feet, you mutineered son of a bitch, or I'll shut it for you. Mr. Erickson. This man requested permission to speak to the captain. Flash him to the mast. No water, no rations. He obviously has a delicate stomach. What do you call me? Huh? Say it again. Cookie, don't you ever call me that. Scrub them pots. Wash the mug's plate. My name is Thomas Mugridge. Mr. Mugridge, to you. As you wish, Mr. Mugridge. There you are. Polish them till they shine. Gentlemen, eh? <laughs> What'd you say your name is? Humphrey Van Waden. Humphrey. Uh, you don't mind if I call you slops, do you? Real short and to the point. I don't imagine it matters whether I mind or not. You hit the nail on the head. I told you to do the pans first, didn't I, slops? You can start with this one. <laughs> 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 Don't blame me if you have the hands of a girl, Slops. Never mind that now. You can do it later. Go scrub the floor in the main saloon. Captain will want to clean when he goes into lunch. the main saloon? Ah, that's there. What were you doing? Dang your eyes. Oh. I run my fingers to the bone trying to grow something green and then some idiot comes along and walks all over it. When Wolf Larson finds out you messed up his garden, he'll tear you to pieces. His garden? Of course. I'll bet we're the only ship in the world that has its own farm.
That's why we have to go thirsty. to die for Wolf Larson, do you? do you want? This is Hunter's quarters. I was assigned the bunk Mr. Erickson used to have. <laughs> That's mine. That one's yours. Gentlemen, here, drink that. It'll make you feel better. I've never touched the demon rum. Drink. That's an order.
where's the money that was in it? Look what you've done to them. Where are the $85 that, that were in my wallet? Why ask me? You took these clothes to dry them for me. You're accusing me? You're calling me a thief? Are you dirty lily living? You're the real thief. You and all the parasites like you. What the hell you got against vegetables? I'm sorry. You gotta treat plants good, mate. Plants is life or death for us human beings. Here, take this. Fill it with water. You give them a drink and they'll forgive you. They're like men, they have to drink a lot. You see, the water uh, passes uh, through the earth and carries away the salt. It goes in fresh water and comes out salt water. I figured it out myself. <laughs> Here, go on, give it to him. Oh, no, you don't. We're half dying of thirst as it is. That's all there is for the whole crew, and he's wasted at making mud pies. Them's captain's orders. That's right. Captain's orders have to be obeyed. His plants need a lot of water? All right. By God, we'll give them plenty. Here, the whole Pacific Ocean. You kill us. William! You and my plants have always drunk the same water. You will continue to do so. Take them. me my life. I must tell you to your face, what you just did is the most monstrous, most inhuman... Throw it. The shark was unforeseen. Take it in today. These attacks never last more than three days. Uh, Captain, shall I leave the tray outside again? No. Bring it in. table. May I ask what you're suffering from? You may not.
your surprise that I have books? You think that's the exclusive privilege of the upper classes? Of course not. But Shakespeare, De Quincey, and Tyndall. And the sciences, too. Here's Darwin, Linnaeus. You're interested in botany? Why else would I have Dingbat on board? He's the only man in the world who can grow fresh greens with brackish water. I have no wish to sicken with a sailor's disease for lack of fresh vegetables. Even if your vegetables require a great deal of water from our rations? Naturally. You can't be serious. How could a man who reads these books... Captain, in the name of Christian charity, I beg you to put into the nearest island where we can replenish our water supply. In the name of what? Hump. Every living thing. Man, animal, or vegetable is nothing but a yeast of ferment. Nothing more. And nature has arranged it so the biggest ferment devours the smallest, and the strongest, the weakest are men. By your leave, sir. I object wholeheartedly. How can your objections possibly matter? You, the weakest sniveling ferment in the whole ship's company. How do you raid even against the cook? He's a slimy worm. But even that worm has more guts than you have. So, he's devouring you. What a bestial way to judge human relations. I can prove to you... You can't prove anything to me. You know why? Because I am a bigger and stronger ferment than you are. The discussion is finished. <laughs> Looks like Johnson and that Lewis got it in their mind to jump ship. <laughs> Trying to make it look like they're avoiding a reef. Only there ain't no reef there. Sure as sin, they're aiming to go around the point. There's an English trading post on the windward side of the island. And a fort, too, no doubt. Brutus, woofty oofty. Stop them. But don't shoot to kill. I have plans for them.
Hump. Seems like you set a lot of store by philosophy. So tonight you take supper with me and we'll talk. Don't give yourself airs. To me, you're still slops. So peel them potatoes. The injustice of it. The sewer rats invited to eat at the captain's table. And I have to serve him. Me. Me. Thomas Mugridge. It ain't right. Sister, I'll take you down a peg or two. Leave me alone. Yes. No! I warned you. Gentlemen, mouths closed when chewing, please. We're trying to talk. You were saying, Hump? I was about to ask a question. How long will this, this voyage last? I know we're hunting for seal, but after that... We're hunting whatever there is to be caught, but that's not what we were talking about. If I'm not mistaken, you trotted out a series of sophisms with which you hope to demonstrate your assumption that I am a man whose only religion is instinct. In other words, uh, an Epicurean. Rather than Epicurean, I should say hedonist. Only hedonism considers the pleasures of the individual a sound basis for his morality. I know, I know, Aristippus the Young. <laughs> Captain, judging from the oscillation of that lamp, the sea's continuing to build up. Yes, we are in for a gale. Cookie. Yes, Captain? A bone, huh? Is this your subtle way of calling me a dog? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Hump, you may now return my plate. before it blows out. Cummins, take that halyard further aft. Wait till I ease the sheet, then haul away. The ship is supposed to go over the waves, not under them, and you call yourself a sailor.
you make a mess of it, it'll be the last you ever make. Do you still question my right to hold the power of life and death over all of you? Erickson! Mr. Erickson, never send a man aloft you can't depend on. Aye, aye, sir. Johnson, look. Two of them together. This is our chance. You tried to stab me in the back while I was saving your worthless lives. Well, here I am. What are you waiting for? You're ten against one, and the ten of you don't add up to a man. Well, come on. Come on, you hyenas. I'll turn my back again. Yeah.
trust I didn't keep you from anything important. They passed the word that you was resting in your cabin because you was feeling bad and that Erickson was with you. One of the mutineers locked us in. We had to break down the door, but now we're going to teach him a lesson. Oh, uh, what can you do that I haven't already done? Well, you must be crazy. This means real trouble. Ah, uh, shut up. You're in trouble the minute you set foot on Wolf Larson's ship. My brother shipped out with him. And there was a sea battle with Death Larson. My brother never came home again. He was just a kid. And what if we did get rid of the skipper and the mate? Nobody here knows how to navigate, do they? It's a crazy idea. What are you doing here, spying on us? Leave him alone. He's just another poor bugger like the rest of us. He's right. Wolf Larson don't need spies. <laughs> he knows who's out to get him, all right. Johnson and me, we're marked men. Huh? You could do us a big favor, otherwise it's our next. You helped me once. And Lewis saved my life. What can I do for you? You can get into the captain's cabin. You take a good look at the charts and find out where we are and what course we'd have to set to reach land. Don't be squeamish, doctor. You can't hurt me. Erickson? He had never learned to swim. He was that afraid of the water. I designate you first mate. Me? Well, you have intelligence. You've been trained to use it. You learn fast. It's about time you stopped walking with your father's legs. From now on, you are Mr. Van Wait. May I ask you what punishment is to be inflicted on the men who attacked you? Are you afraid to say Lewis and Johnson, they'll get what they richly deserve. They'll feed the sharks. They're men, Captain. What's the difference? Men have souls. Souls? <laughs> you see, you're afraid you'll die. Otherwise, your eyes wouldn't be wild with fear. And your brain would be screaming, Stop, for God's sake, you're killing me. The soul is nothing but an invention to stave off fear. As first mate, I need to know our course and position. took provisions and a cask of water. And what were you doing? Dreaming about your Yokohama whore? Stand by to come about, Mr. Van Weyden. We'll retrace our course. Aye, aye, Captain. Stand by to come about. Duty watch, send yard men aloft. The rest man the windlasses. <laughs> Down helm, hard over. Down helm, hard over. Down helm, aye, aye. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. Aye, aye, sir, steady she is. Mr. Van Weyden, set the flying jib and the Tagalog staysails. That'll give us another half an hour. Set the flying jib and all to gallant stay so. Do you expect to retake them, Captain? Certainly. To escape from me, it's not enough just to know the course. Hump.
Lost your appetite, Mr. Van Weyden? Mm, it's quite understandable. As first mate, you're naturally angry and somewhat embarrassed at the totally unjustified desertion of two of your men and their theft of ship's property. You can relax. They'll soon be in our hands again. Knowing the ship's course is not much use unless you uh, also know her position. You're likely to wander all over the ocean, believing that port is just over the horizon. And that's where port remains, always just over the horizon. And if you sail this side of the Pacific Ocean, you'll be bound sooner or later to meet Death Larson. Death Larson? My brother, master of the steamship Macedonia, seal hunter. We'll meet him most probably off the Japan coast. Men have named him Death. Is he like you? <laughs> Hardly. He's an animal without any head. Oh, he has all my, uh, my, uh... Brutishness? Yes, thank you for the word. All my brutishness, but he can scarcely read or write. And he doesn't philosophize about life? No, never. And he's all the happier for it. He's too busy living life to think about it. My mistake was in ever opening the books. Why should your brother be interested in those two men? <sighs> because they belong to me. Sail ho! On the horizon, two points off the port bow! It's them. Fluttering like birds in a net. Captain, listen to me. I'm well aware that only a fool would try to frighten you with threats. But I'm going to warn you anyway. If you kill those two men, you will have to kill me too. Because I will try to prevent murder with all my strength and with any means at hand. Spoken like a man. My compliments, Mr. Van Weyden. Courage should always be rewarded. You have my word. No one will lay hands on them. We're nearly dead in the water. It's a bad sign when the trade wind dies so fast. Yes, sir. -y. I don't like the looks of this weather. I think we're in for a blow. Or are you still afraid of a bit of weather? What about those men? 
The boat is trying to get under our lee. Ahoy, the boat! The Leland! God's sake! Pick up those two men! You promised you wouldn't let anything happen to them! I promise no one will lay a hand on them. And no one will. David! You knew they ended up this way, didn't you? You knew it! Bet your head still aches. Well, in this case, I guess it's to be expected. I brought you, I brought you a pickup. Uh, here you go, drink her down. This here is a brew that'll cure anything at all, from the French disease to bad breath. Yes, sir. A secret recipe of my old granny's. I always carry the herbs with me. You see, you boil them up, and then uh, you add a little pinch or two of sulfur, and. Uh, I put it away, every last drop. <laughs> no, going up against Wolf Larson ain't a healthy thing to do. How long was I out? Quite a spell, you know. Seems like that gale wasn't never gonna blow itself out. You hear that? They saw we'd been passing wreckage. Now they must have caught sight of the castaways. No, not those two poor fellows, Mr. Van Waden. No, I calculate they both must have went right straight on down to Davy Jones' locker. So I guess you could say it were it were all for nothing, weren't it? Help! 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 Launch the number three boat. Aye, aye. I see they did put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Mate, are we glad to see you. Look, give up hope. Easy does it. Don't get panicky. I want you to be a witness to a good deed. Are you going to pick them up? Or is it more fun just to torment them? Oh, I shall pick them up, Mr. Van Waden. Only because the ship is short-handed. a woman. It's been so long since I've seen one. I can't recall what it is women got that I like. Can you recall what it is? Nothing else but Charlie. <sighs> Mr. Van Waden, you will escort the lady below and see that she has whatever she requires. Aye, aye, sir. Thank you. Cookie, fetch hot sea to my cabin. What was your ship? The city of Tokyo, out of Seattle. 8,000 ton steamship. The boilers exploded during the gale, blew her to smithereens. Uh, 
I, I'll dig up some dry clothes for you to put on. Try to rest. Huh? You look worn out. We'll be put ashore at the nearest port, won't we? Now, you must not tire yourself. She blew up, eh? Sky high. Steam. You can't trust it, I always say. What'd you do aboard? Black gang. I was a stoker like him. He was a steam fitter. Well, our boilers can't blow up because we ain't got none. So you'll just have to be ordinary seamen. What do you mean? Shipwrecked seamen don't have to work away. This ain't no passenger ship. You sign on or you starve. That's Wolf Larson. <coughs> Captain Wolf Larson to you. And never forget it. Just as I fished your worthless hide out of the sea, I can throw you back in. Or would you like to call my bluff? Now, you will all do well to remember this. I can keep you on board until you rot, if I so desire. Captain Larson, this is my first mate, Mr. Van Waden, and these are my seal hunters. I'm Miss Maud Brewster from Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm very grateful to you, Captain. Cookie, you may serve. Miss Brewster, in future, kindly observe the meal hours. Breakfast at 7, dinner at 12, supper at 6, precisely. 7, 12, and 6, precisely. I'll remember, Captain. However, I hope I won't have to impose on your hospitality for long. When do we reach Yokohama? In four months, possibly three, if the hunting season closes early. I thought... I was led to understand it's only a day's sail away. Perhaps I may be taken off by a passing vessel. There'll be no passing vessels except other... Sealing schooners. Pigs. Cookie, serve them the meat. Your name is Van Waden? Yes, Miss Brewster. Any relation to Humphrey Van Waden? Your humble servant, ma'am. Why, this is incredible. I've read every one of your books. We have a celebrity in our midst? And you never let on. What in heaven's name are you doing on this ship? It wasn't really something I'd planned. But let's just say I took it in my head, and when I woke up, here I was. Mr. Van Waden is here for the experience. He's learned a great deal since he's been with us. Some might say, uh, too much for his own good. Ships, boats on the horizon, dead ahead. Maybe that means there are other survivors. Or maybe the boats belong to a ship that was sent to look for us. If that's the case, my companions and I can leave this ship right Stow away. Stow it, Miss Brewster. A woman aboard ship should be seen and not heard. They're the Macedonia's boats, Captain. And they're working hard. They found a herd of seal? Please, sir. It's better you come see with your own eyes.
ammo for men. What are you waiting for? Lower away number three boat. Put your backs in it. That's it. Ease her down. Do it right and we'll all get rich. Hear that, men? Let's go. to give battle. Make the signal attack. Aye, aye, sir. Tonight we eat whale steaks. you're doing is criminal. It's piracy. Two years ago, I took a thousand seal from him. This time, the spoils are much greater. He'll die of apoplexy. But those men will get killed. Save your own neck, Hump. Don't fret about theirs. seems to be winning. <laughs> Make the signal return to ship immediately. My brother has come looking for his wharf rats. Set all sails! Steer to meet our boats! All deckhands to the rails, ready to recover the boats! There's no time to lose! Hoisting the boats. There are dead and wounded. I was on a ship that exploded. What could I see that would be worse than that? Wolf Larson in a bad mood. <laughs> Not to mention death, Larson. Him that's after us with a crew I callate is twice as big as ours in a cannon. Maud, don't go up. Mr. Van Wade, I doubt that you can protect her. You're a marked man. Wolf Larson will never forgive anyone that's guilty of treachery. Are they gaining? You're not afraid for yourself, are you? What would happen if they were able to board us? Things better left unsaid. Not for nothing is my brother called 
death larson he's even more voracious than i am he's never read a book in his life he has an elementary mind that goes directly to the bottom of everything with men and with women you believe in an almighty god so start praying if we can just hold them off until sunset we'll find some fog banks to play hide and seek in What do we do now? Nothing. And we do it without a sound. If they can't find us, they can't board us. Brutus, you're in charge of the prisoners. Slit the throat of anyone who tries to give an alarm. With pleasure, Captain. choice between losing more time hunting us or recovering the boats he lost he'll choose the boats i told you he has a simple direct mind
<laughs> Come on, let's drink a toast to the captain of the good ship Ghost. Bottoms up, boys. The Wooblers on me way. Speaking of shanty, mates, <laughs> we'll serenade the young lady. <laughs> That's my bad joke. Want to know the best thing about shipping out with Wolf Larson? If he gets shot, he gives you free disinfectants. <laughs> Give me back. You don't drink, Mr. Van Weyden? Why, uh... You doing sailor's work? They're all blind drunk. And the captain's ill again. He tell you he's sick? <laughs> By the by, where's the uh, little miss? In the cabin. Stay out of this hump, or you'll be dead. Why should we lift a hand for you? Because like all morons, you have a conscience. happened before. It'll be at least three days before he comes out of it. Maud, we've got to get away from this ship. I've got the charts we need, and we'll provision one of the boats. We can't possibly launch one alone. I might be persuaded to lend a hand or two. What do you want? Like the young lady said, you two are kind of short on muscle, eh? I ask what you want. To come with us? Me? Leave my garden? No. Uh, I'll just help you get launched. And the best of luck to you. If he finds out, he'll kill you. He won't find out. Why should you risk it? We're wasting time chewing the fat. All them drunken swabbies is gonna start waking up pretty soon. With awful hangovers. And worse tempers. Let's go.
come with us. Uh, no, this is my home. Be sure you keep the little lady out of sight. Brothers below decks in his cabin. Let's hope it is.
wait here while I look below. my lady. Here comes your knight in shining armor. This way, Mr. Van Weyden. So, you managed to escape. Miss Brewster, your hero has finally learned to stand on his own two feet. It's a mistake ever to underestimate a man. I made the same mistake with my brother. Were there no survivors? <laughs> they were permitted to Sign on as crew of the Macedonia. Why leave you? This time, my brother's mind proved not so simple. Why not? You're the king of the jungle now, and you can devour me. In your place, I wouldn't hesitate for a second. I don't doubt that. But I'm not Wolf Larsen. I'm a very ordinary human being. What's more, you don't kill a man you need. You taught me that, and I need you. Without your knowledge, we're lost. Lead on. Where? To your cabin. Oh, my God. He's blind. Yes, Miss Brewster. I'm blind. That's why your brother let you live. Yes, but he'll never have the satisfaction of hearing that Wolf Larsen was found blind as a worm, quivering helplessly aboard the wreck of his last command. Listen to me, Damien. We can set sail on the foremast. There's no real damage there. And with luck, we might be able to reach one of the main shipping lanes, where we'd have a good chance of being saved. Oh. should have killed me when you had the chance. You will not exhibit me like a freak in a sideshow. No port in the world will ever see Wolf Larsen as an object of laughter or pity. He will scuttle his ship and go down with her instead. <laughs> He's hard as iron. He can't talk. Captain, can you hear me? You can't talk? something to write with.
I must warn you. I have a gun. Never underestimate a woman either. I made the same mistake myself. Captain, the flying jib and four staysail are set in drawing. service for the dead that matters I now pronounce, and the mortal remains shall be consigned to the deep.